Welcome to the Microsoft Partner Network podcast. Every week we bring in industry leaders and Microsoft partners to talk about the big ideas shaping business and technology today. Hey everybody, this is Rachel Bronstein with the Microsoft Partner Network. I've been here in Austin, Texas at South by Southwest having a crazy time at Interactive. It's kind of tapering off today. I'm sitting here with Ben West and Jeff Sinclair who are co-founders of EventBase. EventBase is actually the app behind all of South by Southwest along with Microsoft Inspire and many of our other fantastic events around the world. So I've wanted to first introduce these two guys, see what how they met and how they started event base. Jeff? And I apologize my voice. I sound a little bit like Deborah Harry right now, so I've been talking for four days in South West, so I apologize for that up front. Uh, yeah, Ben and I met each other back in the dot-com days. Uh, we worked for a company called Stockhouse at the time. Ben was the CTO. I ran the products team. And it was a very large website, uh, one of the busiest websites, one of the busiest financial websites in the world. It was the busiest website in Canada. We're based in Vancouver, Canada. And it was one of the busiest Microsoft-powered websites in the world. So we really knew the, the web. Uh, but in 2008, when smartphones came out, Ben and I were walking our dogs in the forest and we're like, you know what? We need to do a mobile company. And then we decided, well, that, that was right around when the time when Vancouver was hosting the Olympics in 2010. So we started the company nine months before the Olympics and we made it our mission to do the official app for the Olympic Games. So we did that. On we, It was a big challenge for a group of five people at the time, but that set us on a path of doing event apps. That's awesome. Ben. How's this guy, Jeff? He's all right, I guess. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, other than his voice and his strange pseudo Australian accent, I think Jeff and I have worked together for a long time. Like Jeff said, we met in the dot com era, and um, when the uh, smartphones uh, came onto the market, it was just one of those things that seemed like a natural new segue for us to work together again on something really interesting. And the Olympics, I uh, think we we worked really hard. We also lucked out uh, on that opportunity, but uh, that really did set us on a path to be able to do the world's biggest event, to be taken seriously uh, regardless of what uh, what event we walked into. Um, and I think we work really well together. Jeff uh, has a really good sense of how to work and partner with the world's largest brands and enterprises. Um, and uh, that allows me to focus more on the technology side and understand how to fulfill um, those those obligations at an enterprise level in terms of reliability and scalability and, and also feature set uh, features that are going to make it for a great experience for the attendee and also make sure that our partners and our clients feel that their objectives are being met through that technology. Awesome. And so you've been talking a little bit about partnering. Um, Jeff, can you talk about how you started your partnership with Microsoft and what that journey has been like a little bit? Sure. I think it might have even been at South by Southwest where we met the digital team from Microsoft that had come down to experience South by Southwest and they loved the app and we started talking about, well, what can we do with Microsoft? And ultimately, uh, we started working about two and a half years ago. Uh, so there were certain things that Microsoft was really excited about, having a great Windows Phone product at the time, uh, with the introduction of tablets, having a fantastic tablet experience there as well. We, we started building for Windows back at the 2010 Olympics. So we built it back, back then it was called Windows Mobile, and it was, it was terrible, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, the introduction of the Windows Phone, so that was a complete rewrite from the ground up. And that was a, a big step forward for, the, for the Microsoft, and it, it meant that we enjoyed working on that platform again. It was definitely... Um, but for us, working with Microsoft, we started with your biggest event, which was called Worldwide Partner Conference, which is now Inspire. Uh, and for us, that's the way we typically work, is like we come in and help some a brand with their biggest problem, their biggest event of the year. Uh, and then they realize, well, maybe we can use you for your, our other events as well. So with Microsoft, we do probably about a dozen of your largest events worldwide. Uh, and we have a, a new platform we just launched, which allows us to use that same infrastructure to host even small events for Microsoft now. So you know, we're definitely focused on a premium experience. Uh, and, and Microsoft has really enjoyed being able to showcase what's great about the Windows uh, 
the Windows Phone platform uh, at their events and at other events around the world as well. So we have other customers like the Consumer Electronics Show, CES. Uh, we worked with them for the first time this year. Uh, groups like uh, SAP uh, and others that uh, Hewlett Packard, for instance, have great partnerships with Microsoft as well. And they, they really want to showcase the technology there as well. So it's been an important platform for us. And something that you talked about, Ben, is that what you really do when you're working with customers is figuring out what they need and building upon that. And so clearly you've had to scale up quite a bit. Can you talk about what that was like in terms, because you're on the product side, what that's been like over the past few years, especially when you're doing something like CES or South by? Yeah, it's definitely been a steep learning curve and uh, it somewhat mirrors what we went through back in the dot-com era where things were just exploding. We had to work very closely with our partners at the time, which included Microsoft to understand how to tackle these challenges around um, scalability uh, for for a new um, technology. So when we work with our partners, uh, it's really important to understand what their needs are from a, a, a marketing standpoint because a lot of these events are marketing driven and that often uh, filters down into a suite of features that showcase uh, what their, their latest and greatest are. So when we came into this uh, space, what we did is we instead of having a cookie cutter approach, we built an abstract Extracted a uh, system that allows us to have a consistent core foundational technology and then build upon that to meet the needs of our customers. So the platform um, services biggest events around the world, South by Southwest and an Inspire and Comic Con and all these events around the world are all running off that same foundational platform, but they look very different because on top of that foundation, we have this layer that allows us to custom the experience to be perfect for that event so it looks and feels like that partner's brand it has features in it that make sense for that user group um, and then behind the scenes we really try to understand the specific engineering uh, requirements of that partner and it's not always the most exciting thing to talk about it is for me and the team but really understanding what they need from an infosec um, uh, perspective to make sure that we're adhering to their corporate policy so in the case of Microsoft where do they need to be hosted uh, geographically, what are their requirements in terms of uh, security auditing, um, and what environments do we have to host on? Are we going to be hosting on Azure? So, what sort of technologies do we need to put in so that our foundation can run on that? So, when we started working with Microsoft, it became clear that we would need to host on on a variety of environments, in, including Azure. And so, we invested very heavily in the engineering and worked very closely with them to understand how we could segue our foundation to run on on Azure uh, and allow us to consistently consistently deploy and, and monitor that. Um, and as a result, we, we don't compromise the experience or reliability or security of our core platform, even though it's now running on many, many different environments. Um, and then after every event, what we do is get back together with that client, see see what worked, what, what could be improved on, and, and what's next, because obviously it takes a while to roll out these features to match uh, what that client's objectives are for the next year. So we're really lucky that we have this extensible platform, because it means we can be, become perfect for that client um, and not force them to the limitations of our technology. Instead, be much more of a, a partner approach. So I was really excited by the South By. You announced Abby, a chat bot. And here at South By, bots and AI and IoT has just been the topic of conversation um, everywhere. And so how did that come to life? How does that work exactly? And what was the process like to get you to the launch? And what do you see in the future? Sure. So we always like to launch new technology at South by Southwest. It's why people come here to sort of see a glimpse of what's next and how they can maybe apply that to their business or in their everyday lives. So a couple of years ago, we were the first company to do a large beacon deployment. Uh, we deployed a thousand beacons across 600 venues in Austin for South by Southwest, all with the purpose of um, allowing hyperlocal networking. So when you're in a room, because GPS doesn't work indoors, we were able to show people that were near you and you can actually chat with them and connect while you're in the same room. So we've always tried to launch new things uh, and I think this year is really the year of the intelligent app. You know, it's not just about bots uh, and it's not just about artificial intelligence. It's about, we, we've, we've migrated over the course of the time we've been running event base from just trying to replace, replace the printed guide which was the first mission. Just make it digital, make it searchable, make it updatable. And then it was all that interactivity, so the networking or indoor location or gamification. 
Um, those are all great use cases. But I think with the introduction of things like the, um, this intelligence layer, we can actually help attendees have a better experience by making an event at the size of Southwest, 6,000 sessions, to make it feel actually uh, digestible, like it's actually tailored for you. So the recommendation engines in the, uh, we, we launched the session recommendation engine last year, and that was a big success, recommending these sessions for you based on everything we know about you. And we would do things like look for gaps in your schedule, and then recommend sessions that are nearby as opposed to across the other side of Austin. And we'd also look to see if it was already at capacity. We're not going to recommend those. We're not going to send you to the keynote when we know that's going to be sold out, right? So, but the, that, that was the sort of start of this uh, making in this intelligent app. This year we added uh, recommendations for attendees uh, based on the same sort of algorithms um, and introduced the bot, which for us, uh, we see eventually the bot may be the only interface a user has to the Southwest West app. It might be the first thing you see because it's like a digital concierge in your pocket. And ideally, I want to have with you at all times the... I equate it to like a, uh, in a hotel, you go to the concierge and then you can ask them anything and they would know where to get uh, a taco that's not too street food, but a, you know, a classic place nearby. You got to have tacos here. You have to have tacos. But, you know, with, with Abby, we have to train Abby to be able to understand the, the context of whatever, what the questions are. Uh, we also have to, the, the intelligence really comes from, you can, we can have like a, a pre-scripted set of questions for like, you know, what time does the trade show open, for instance. But the harder part is, is when they ask questions about anything in the schedule, we have to understand if you ask what artificial intelligence sessions are on tomorrow afternoon, we have to like route that request to our event database and make sure you make the request that way and bring that back and actually present we actually present uh, in a tile view inside the bot so you don't have to like get bumped out of the bot to get the results so that, that was a, uh, the idea of intelligently routing that is, is a lot of the work that event base had to do to make that work but in our ideal world um, we work with a lot of these big consumer events like the Microsoft events if we can make it so that the, the bot is like having every expert from Microsoft with you at all times somebody following you around that you can ask a question to uh, and, and be able to get a really intelligent response. Uh, I think we'll get there. I think the speed with which we get from kindergarten to grade school and the master's degree might only be another year or two, but eventually it'll get there. So for us, it's a really bold experiment to do this in Southwest OS, but the response has been great. I've tried it out. It, it worked for the few things that I did ask it. It was pretty cool. Ben, what scares you the most when you're at these huge events? What what has happened? Do you have a story or anything kind of cool? Like, what's how do you tackle it? Uh, stories I can tell. <laughs> um, well, I think the thing that, that we've learned is events are inherently complex, particularly at this size. There's over 6,000 sessions, as Jeff said. There's over 600 venues. Um, stuff's going to go sideways across across the board because people are going to cancel. Rooms are going to uh, fill up. There's going to be changes to everything. And so we've put a lot of engineering in to be able to handle handle those those changes um, but what scares us is is when we do roll out a, a totally new technology that's unproven combined with the dynamic nature of events we often don't know what's going to go sideways and we have to be able to handle that really quickly so South by is a perfect case where they've got a very critical audience they're savvy a lot of uh, technology experts here designers so they're going to really hammer you if you get it wrong that's great feedback for us so we don't worry about the feedback, but we will worry about, worry about compromising the event experience. People can't go to unlimited events. They go to the ones that are most important to them. And we really want to make sure they have a great time. So it's a risk for us, and it's definitely something that keeps us up at night. If we're going to deploy something new, like beacons, like recommendations, or like a bot, and deploy that for the first time to tens or hundreds of thousands of, of experts that are demanding, are we going to get it right. So uh, with the bot, we went into it with the philosophy of we're going to get a bunch of things right, but we're also going to get a lot of things wrong. Uh, but that's okay as long as we monitor it and learn from it very quickly uh, and set expectations for users. So I would say is we've done a, a good job of, of deploying something really innovative, technically very complicated, um, and not compromising the, the user experience and the event experience. Uh, and we're going to learn a lot from it. We're going to be able to segue that into other events that 
we we uh, we do. And South by is a great partner in that regard, in that they go into it and they they know it's okay to to take a swing and miss, or to take a swing and and hit it a little bit and then learn and correct. So we work very closely with them as with other our other partners to see what works and and what doesn't. When we deployed beacons for the first time, we did a smaller deployment to understand how that affects the user journey at events. Uh, and then the following year went much, much bigger. In, in a similar way, with Abby this year, we haven't forced users into having that as the only way you're going to use the app because people still have behaviors and expectations from searching the schedule as they have for years and years and years. But I've been using the bot as my start point, not just because I'm forcing myself to do it as the product guy, but but also I, I've honestly found it faster to get to the content. And we can see usage of the bot at South By um, in our, our dashboards going up roughly 15 to 20% uh, per day is the increase on average of users using it more and more and more. We know we're going to have to train them to use it in a different way. Um, and uh, I'm loving the experience. And so I'm really happy, as much as it did stress us out, uh, to come into this event deploying something new. I think it, it's worked well and um, it'll be even better next year. Is there anything, are your heads already spinning for next year or something that you're excited to try out and keep kind of iterating on? So I, don't, I think the bot is going to be much more in the form forefront next year uh, I think we're going to we're going to be looking at uh, innovative use of, of beacons um, beyond the use cases we've had in the past uh, there's still some use cases that we're really excited about that we haven't unlocked yet um, beacon technology is becoming less and less costly so the once the cost of a beacon gets down below the sort of two dollars per beacon we can do some really interesting things like give every attendee a beacon that they carry around with them at all times we can't do that when they're five, ten dollars a piece, but the price point gets low enough. We can actually incorporate that into the badge that you buy, and so we've already started doing this on a small scale. Um, but I think by 2018, that is going to be something that every event will have that le- that level of interactivity uh, built directly into the badges and with a tight integration back into the app, so that you know when you walk into a room, you get an alert on your phone that says, "You know, welcome to this session. Would you like to participate here? Would you like more information about this?" topic whatever it is so, or uh, for gamification the idea that you can you know collect points by going we, we do some of those things right now but it does require that people opt in uh, through by have to turn on their bluetooth which not everybody keeps bluetooth all the time so you have to really educate so that's something that a lot of our customers are exploring right now we, we sort of work on the cycle of South OS so it'll be over the summertime when we come up with the crazy concepts and that's really what Ben's <laughs> Ben comes in the room and says we can do all these crazy things then we sort of boil it down to okay what is it that will have the impact in the event experience and what is it that will really move it forward because Southwest West wants to be on the forefront of technology they want to be showcasing new things um, they're not afraid to take a risk you know some of our big corporate clients you know would prefer that it's their brands they, don't, they do not want it to be that risky I think the um, they want it to work perfectly every time totally makes sense but uh, that's what we enjoy about working with Southwest West and we've worked with South by now for a number of years but Southwest West came on as our first investor in 2014 they actually created a fund to fund, uh, they gave us $2 million back in 2014. It's the first ever investment. Uh, for them, they saw the impact that our technology was having at this event. And for us, that was an endorsement, which has allowed us to grow. We've, we've tripled in size in the last 18 months. Um, but the their endorsement and their willingness to take risks with us has been has really helped us um, grow so fast. And, and ultimately, our, our customers come to Southwest West to see the technology that we're rolling out here because it's uh, they're really trying to push the envelope there. Yeah, actually, I would actually clarify. So this is why Jeff and I work together so well. Is that I don't I'm not afraid to like call them up. So just oh, the right. founders are fighting. No, we're not fighting. <laughs> <laughs> He's adding on Ben. Yeah. Um, no, I think what Jeff said about enterprise clients being very uh, risk averse is something that I'm actually seeing change a little bit. Uh, and I think that is part of sort of the grand experiment that we're all going through as these new canvases like mobile devices and augmented reality um, and big data coming out. You have an entire uh, uh, global population that is used to trying out new technologies and seeing what they like and don't like and then 
expressing themselves. And that's very different from um, a, a heritage uh, technology perspective where you would have very long um, trial and buying cycles, no feedback loops. But mobile really started changing that because there was an immediacy to it. And so what I've seen on the product side is that these large organizations that you would normally expect to be very risk averse are actually starting to become more risk tolerant because they want to innovate and then they know with innovation comes risk and they want to have it mitigated and and have some boundaries like a sandbox put around it but they're okay putting themselves out there because the users are more forgiving because they know that there there's an expectation of them they might not realize it but they know that new technology is something that they can try and that they can give feedback on and that it will get better from there so for me that's great because it means that these very large organizations um, that do have the financial resources to fund innovation are actually doing it more rapidly than they did historically because they're they're becoming more open to that iterative approach that, that gets you there faster. So that's that's great. Like, to Jeff said they, they are they don't want a complete experiment. They do want to put some boundaries around it. But but I think that we're going to see an increasing rate of innovation in the enterprise space uh, because of this changing perception of what's acceptable to deploy. I think we might be testing some stuff out at Microsoft Inspire. So if you're coming out, get ready. You might have beacons in your badges. <laughs> Just kidding. So, last question. Um, you guys got through dot com. You clearly are looking at where you need to move your business. Um, and I think our partners, many of them are still transforming or trying to figure out what, how can they specialize or how, what area can they start to focus in on or do with marketing? What are your, some of your recommendations as we move forward into the future? It's really important to get your product market fit. Right. So Ben and I bootstrapped this company for the first five and a half years. We had to be profitable. We we started, as I said, working with these big consumer events like the Olympics. We did the London 2012 Olympics and worked on things like Sundance Film Festival and Comic Con. And we were we were building a great stack of technology, a really good product. But it, we 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 recognized the the product market fit. It was really only about three years ago that when we got the investment from Zavas West and we could actually really scale what we're doing. Uh, and when we what we found was that our offering was perfect for enterprise because they didn't want a boring conference app. So our product market fit was we had this really dynamic, visually exciting uh, tool that they can use at their events. And they were looking at what, what their competitors had, which were, it looks like a boring conference app. No one wants their conference to be boring. So but recognizing that product market fit, that's allowed us to scale. We now have half of the top... 20 technology companies in the world have standardized on the web-based platform for their biggest events. And for us, their trust in us is as much about not just the features that we deliver, the scalability and the security, it's about how does this represent our brand? So anyway, the key is like to nail your product market fit, and when you've got that and you're differentiating the market, that's when you can really go big. That's awesome, Ben. Do you have anything to add? I would say focus, as, as Jeff said, is really key. Uh, it's very tempting when you're starting out to be all things to all people, particularly when you get requests coming in. But if you can focus on something that you're really excited about, that gives you that that singular vision that helps your product move quicker. It also helps keep your team aligned. And when you're moving really quickly, it's important to have autonomy in your organization. And you can accomplish that if you have this clear vision that's constantly conveyed out to your to your team. And whether that team is five people or 50 people, if they truly understand what you're building, then you can all run very, very quickly. Um, um, but I would also say that that focus needs to be open to iteration and change, just as our partners are doing now. So look at the data, understand what's working and what's not. Don't put too much time into something because it just feels right if it's not actually working. Learn how to, to, to constantly improve upon what you've built and address the market in a way that how the market's responding to you. Because it is a, it, it's a two-way street. There's a feedback loop when you deploy a product to your partners. They'll resonate with certain aspects of it and you have to learn to start aligning with that resonance as opposed to being kind of bullheaded and push forward on your original vision uh, because you might have missed the mark or the marketplace might have changed in the past six months. Um, that's one of the challenges is in building the bot for us is that space is moving so quickly 
that we have to constantly iterate and, and find out what's working, what's not. And that's the same thing for any partner that's starting out. You want to be constantly iterating. Talk to your partners actively. Sit on the same side of the table as your partners. Don't treat them as customers. Really sit down, be honest with them. Talk about the things that are going to keep you up at night and saying, we're worried about this, worried about this, but this we're really solid on. Because they'll work with you and you'll get a better end result if you work together on it than if you treat it like the the old school dichotomy of, uh, of, of a product and, and customer. That's not the way business gets done anymore. Everyone needs to, to collaborate. Awesome. Well, thank you, Ben. Thank you, Jeff. It's been awesome to talk to you. Uh, check back with us here at Microsoft Partner Network for our next episode in the series. Thanks for listening today and check out the podcast description for show notes. Be sure to subscribe and keep in touch with us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter at MS Partner.